in sport. James Sunderland. Mr Gray, thank you for calling me, and it's a great pleasure to serve before you as chair. Um, can I please commend the Honourable Member for Twickenham uh, for her magnificent speech? There's a delicious irony in the fact the Member for Twickenham is talking about football, <laughs> but to her complete credit, she spoke about uh, women's sport in the round, um, and, and I thought it was uh, you know, a really good indictment of what we need to be doing in sport now. And uh, can I commend you for the debate and also congratulate you on your fantastic speech? Mr Chairman, I love football. I make no apology at all. I'm a huge football fan. Um, the offer in the UK is quite fantastic. We've got the Premier League, the world leading brand. We've got many professional leagues across all four of our nations. We've got millions of fans. We've got people who are paid good money to play sport. And of course, it also brings revenue into the Treasury as well. So what's not to like? What a, what a brilliant way to spend a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday afternoon watching live football, or even on the TV. The offer is great, as I mentioned. Sadly, my own playing days are now behind me. As a rather rotund 50-something-year-old, um, I've stopped playing. But, um, but I can tell you, I have, I have two sons, um, both of whom play to a very good standard. And uh, me watching them at the weekend is, uh, is very important. And also, as a huge non-league fan, I'm regularly found at Aldershot and Bracknell, Woking, Sutton, local clubs to me. Uh, and it's just, as I mentioned, a great way to spend the weekend with, with really decent, real people. Following the success of the Women's Euros 2022, uh, and what a success it was, what a magnificent achievement, I just want to talk, if I can, about women's football. And um, I just think that the progress has been made with women's sport over the last decade or so is quite remarkable. I'll say this twice. Women's football has become the fastest rising sport in the UK. I'm going to say that again. Women's football has become the fastest growing sport in the UK, which I think is just brilliant. And the stats speak for themselves. Nearly 70,000 people were at Old Trafford to watch England's UEFA Euro 22 opener against Austria. 70,000 people. And recently, a friendly against the United States at Wembley attracted about 78,000 fans, which is a record. Uh, quite extraordinary. People are paying really good money to watch fantastic football. And it's just a start, in my view. Funding for women's football still lags far behind the men's game. But the way we address that is by tackling the grassroots football, first of all, and then just building up, as what's happening at the moment. So what are the future? Well, the latest FA survey has found that growth across the board from match day broadcast commercial and prize money sources is exponential. So clubs report year-on-year -year commercial revenue growth of 33% annually, women's football, which is amazing. And it's found that 77% now of female leagues have got a title sponsor, up from only 11% last year. Extraordinary growth. And according to the FIFA, there are 29 million women and girls playing football worldwide. Compare that to the men's game, which is probably 10 times that at least. And the aim is to facilitate 60 million female participants by 2026. I think we'll smash that comfortably. But there's a danger here. And the danger is that 64% of girls quit playing sport by the time they're 16. So we have work to do, not just in building the girls' game up, but also making sure that the girls that play football and any other sport stay with it and then keep playing into their adult lives. So we have work to do. I'm a proud MP for Bracknell in East Berkshire, and uh, the local offer in Bracknell for all sports is really amazing. Um, and we've got grassroots money. We've got a council, Bradford Forest Council, that supports football, male and female football. And why wouldn't you? Because it improves teamwork, it improves camaraderie, it improves decision-making, discipline, mental, physical well-being. So in my view, the benefits of sport for everyone are, are, are beyond doubt. But we need to encourage girls to stay in sport for the reasons I've discussed, for the reasons of teamwork, mental health, and to bring young girls together, perhaps in a way that young boys do find it a bit easier. Because the structure of the game already is that boys play football and girls might not. But why can't boys and girls play football equally in the same numbers with the same opportunities available to them? Please do. Gentleman, give away and he's making an excellent speech. Does he agree with me on two points? Firstly, 
that men and boys are our allies in this challenge of, of, of equality. And, and, and men like him genuinely and, and those like the Minister who speak up for women's sport are crucial in this. Um, and, and secondly, uh, that there has been some challenging rules historically that the FA have imposed on, on boys and girls and, and young men and young women playing together for fun. And yeah. breaking down some of those barriers and having people playing together across the gender spectrum is really important. Tom Thank her for her intervention. Interesting couple of points. I think the first thing is that um, women don't, of course, need men to play football. But actually, it's incumbent upon men, in my view, to encourage the female game and to get people playing. So, so dads like me, who don't have daughters, but let's get the girls playing as well. Uh, and also, you mentioned um, grassroots football. It is so important that, that we nip this in the bud in terms of the stigma that's attached to female football. It's complete nonsense. When you watch it on TV, it's really exciting. The Euros were really exciting. I watched it like you. I was overcome because I thought it was just the most brilliant occasion. And uh, as somebody who has watched and played men's football for 52 years, actually, women's football is the growth sport now. It's where it's at. It's where it's going. So we have to embrace it and, and support it. Um, in Bracknell, Play Sport deliver a weekly girls-only football programme for girls aged 5 to 11 in partnership with our local football club, Bracknell Town Football Club. And Bracknell Town Football Club comprises men's, youth, ladies and junior female teams. And of course, who could forget that wonderful evening on Monday when Bracknell Town hosted Ipswich in the first round of the FA Cup. It was a brilliant night. We almost got there. 65th minute, nil-nil. Replay perhaps of Portman Road. But uh, Ipswich came through to win 3-0. But the important point were, was that there were women in the audience. There were girls that I know play football in Bracknell supporting the local team. It was just brilliant. And... Uh, What's not to like? I want to mention also 25 players back in July 2022, including eight international level, took part in the women's walking football competition at the Bracknell Leisure Centre. And interestingly enough, there's plans being developed now for Bracknell Leisure Centre to be rebuilt in 2028 to build a football stadium and new sports centre which will embrace the female and the male game. How fantastic would it be to have Bracknell with men and women's teams in the football league? lot to look forward to. Just to wrap up if I can, I think that uh, women's football is on an unprecedented rise. As I said, this is the growth sport in the UK. Let's get behind it. Funding has increased tenfold for the female game over the last decade, but we need to spend more on female football. Grassroots football turns into adult football, turns into professional football, so it's worth investing in it. The national team success right now is a fantastic opportunity to embrace the game more widely. So let's build on and reinforce that success. And Bracknell, which I'm very proud, is very poised itself to take on the grassroots women's game. So just to conclude, if I can, with the minister in his place, um, first thing we need to do is to make sure that local clubs and schools across the UK embrace girls' sport, in particular football. Opportunities for men and women, boys and girls, have to be completely equal across the board. We need more adult volunteers and we need more parents to embrace the girls' game. Why wouldn't you? It's a great way to spend a weekend. We need, Minister, please, enhanced government and FA funding to support the girls' and the women's game. And I find myself congratulating the BBC, quite strangely. I commend the BBC. But what the BBC are doing now on TV across the UK in promoting the female game is brilliant. You know, it's great now that you switch the TV on, you can watch either, and it's really, really good. My fourth point to finish off with is that equality in sport is really important. We've heard some horror stories already today about where we haven't had equality, where, where the stigma of the female game is, is still there. It shouldn't be there. It should be as natural as the men's game. And lastly... Let's get stuck in, Minister. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Bordeaux.